Hey people, what's going on? It's Jamil. And right now is a major call for celebration. Um, the last couple weeks, I've been grinding out really hard on the gang stalking, processing through a lot of stuff. And something spectacular happened like within the last week, and I've decided to come out with a series of Jamil Rawls before and after. Jamil Rawls before and after. And there's been many, many, many things that have happened like in the last few weeks. You know, I, uh, just a lot of things dealing with me, dealing with people I know, family, friends. Um, and I've been hanging around my area for a while now, for a couple weeks, I haven't really been leaving the area. But I decided to just put stuff out and show people how much I've changed. Okay, so it would be fair for me to say, like, with, within the last year, uh, within gang stock, there's been a few things that really changed me. One of the things was, uh, I'm a female that lives in my area. I had sent her flowers, and I had done a lot of, um, things, I had done a lot of things, like, I had one... <laughs> I had went outside and I was like yelling. I was like yelling to her that I loved her and stuff. And I don't even know her name. I, I really don't know her. I don't really know her family that well. But I feel because of, I feel that I, I feel that I've outgrown the whatever connection I had to the female, and I feel that she's outgrown whatever connection she has to me. And because she does things with the, she does things like with you know. I'm not. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to put her out there or her family out there, but she does things, you know, with the program, and it's to the point now to where I can tell she still feels uncomfortable doing it, and it's, it's just like, I want her to be able, I want her and her family to be, feel comfortable with the whole thing, and like, if she's supposed to like, look at me, or, or come around, I don't want, it, she's, she, she seems very nervous about it, and I think that's like, uncalled for, I think that we've both grown enough as individuals, to the point to where whatever she does isn't going to bother me, and hopefully whatever I do doesn't bother her. And I have no interest in, like, um, I have no interest in her anymore as, like, um, emotionally or even sexually or anything like that. I was, <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean that in a positive kind of way. Honestly, honestly. I was able to see her up close a few days ago, and... I could tell she was like still afraid to look at me, and I, I couldn't understand. I'm like, why are you? In my mind, I'm thinking, I'm like, why are you so afraid to look at me? Like, like you know. And she she was getting into the car with the guy, and the guy pulled off, and she had to quit put on sunglasses and stuff. And I was thinking, I was like, if it was me getting in the car with a girl, I was like, I wouldn't have a problem looking at you, <laughs> you know. And and so I just want to prove how much I've grown. And this goes back, like this whole experience goes back to March. Um, goes back to the winter time when me and the girl had met eyes and I like I was in a real negative state then and I felt a deep connection with the girl through that and a few years before that she had always showed an interest in me but I was like really closed off and so this is when the gang stalking was really intense for me and then when I had met eyes with her and we, we became synced then I felt like a lot of e emotions for her and, you know, I had, like, sent her flowers, and I even went outside, I went outside, and I was yelling to her that I loved her and stuff like that, I, and I had put a little sign, like, I had took marker with flowers and stuff and put a sign, um, thank you, I was in my front yard for her to see and stuff, and I had never done anything like that, I had never done anything like that, I can't remember the last time I had sent girl flowers before that, and so, this was cataclysmic in my change, and it had changed me a lot, and then, when I, before I left to Phoenix, it, it was like a really kind of negative experience. But then when I got to Phoenix, my mind got straight. And then when I came back, I realized I was like, I was like, all right, man, you know, that's, that's, that's something that's over with. And then I've been building my way up to, to now. And I realized that she, she just seems like she's like intimidated to, if I was her, I would just make the money and, and just go along with it. And just, like, not make a big deal out of it. Like, I have no problem, like, walking down the street with her and her even holding hands with another guy or something like that. I mean, if I have a girl with me, I'm going to do the same thing, you know? So she shouldn't feel embarrassed about doing that to me because I for damn sure wouldn't feel anything about doing that to her. You know I mean? I mean that in a positive way. I mean that. I don't mean that, if, like, something negative. But, <clears throat> all right, so I even have a journal. And this was a journal um, that I started writing. This is... Wednesday, March 23rd, 1.14 p.m. 
Now this is when I was writing the journal. After yelling out to her that I love her, I feel we are spiritually, through our hearts, more connected. I did this yesterday, March 22nd, and at the early hour of 7.30 a.m. So, I can't... <laughs> So, so I'm writing, so this is me writing this back in March. And basically what happened is I wanted to be with this girl and I don't, I, you know, I still don't know her, but I wanted to be with her. And then I went through a period where I didn't even know her name. So I would yell out her mother's name and then say her mother's daughter. I'd say, I love you, such and such as daughter. And, <laughs> and okay, in my mind, I can see her laughing and happy describing to her mother that I had put a sign out for her. Now that was my perception of it, what she'd be doing, I don't know, you know. Um, what else did I write? Oh, the other day, about three days ago, I was able to look her in the eye and I saw she had layers of love for me, the spiritual and emotional vibration I got was we are not done yet. That was at the railroad tracks. The, the program had this girl come to the railroad tracks and look me in my eye. And she seemed so compassionate and, and kind and loving. And I was just like, I was just like, I was like, I was like all right, Jamil, now's the time. Send her, you know what I mean? Like, send her some flowers and stuff like that. And so then it ended up, ended up getting the detectives over my house. That's what it did for me. <laughs> that's, what, that's, what, that's, what, that's what that got me. Her father sent a detective to my home to tell me she doesn't live there anymore. God, that's what that got me. All right. These are just journals and journals. And so, God, I can't believe I wrote all this. I was very hopeful about connecting with the girl, that's for sure. But honestly, in all, in all honesty, like not jazzing anybody, I honestly feel like we've both outgrown each other. And I, that's why I'm just making this like, like this is what the gang stalking program has done for me. It took me for a phase to where I was closed off from the world. And then I tried to interact with this female and like share love with her and stuff. And, it, you know, it didn't work out. So that happened. And then... Now, and now, 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 and I didn't know it. I didn't know it. The girl, okay, they had this girl with black leggings, black yoga pants, and blonde hair, and I didn't know it, but that was her sister. I hadn't seen her. I think I think it. I think it's this. I hadn't seen her in a long time, and they had a girl with, driving in a red truck with sunglasses. Then I then then they had the same girl driving in the red truck without the sunglasses. And then I looked her in the eye, and I was, I'm like, wait a minute. And then I saw that the same truck was parking at the house. I'm like, that's her sister. But I didn't, when she was wearing the legging pants, I didn't notice it. And so I'm like, damn, she's fine as fuck. But, but I didn't know that was, I didn't know that was her sister when I was saying it, when, you know. But, uh, leaving. Damn, this is fucking... Okay, so... And then, okay, see... Okay, so, so basically, so basically what happened is I had, I, I had opened up my heart and shown emotions to a female. I had never actually done that before. And it's benefited me so much because now, because now I can just do it. I can just do it like off the spur. Like I can just see females. I'm not afraid to connect with them. So this has helped to serve me for the rest of my life. And I wasn't gonna make a video. I, I didn't want to make a video about it. I'm just like, man, just you know, like that's her life. That's her business. Whatever. But honestly, I felt it was the right thing to do because I see how like she just, she just seems so uncomfortable with the whole thing. And it's like I, in all honesty, it's like I don't. I don't want to bother her. I don't want to talk to her. I don't want anything from her. I just want her to be able to, like, not feel like she's doing something wrong. So if she's in the car with somebody and she's supposed to be, like, drive by me and look at me in my eye, that's fine with me. I don't got any problem with that. I don't care. It's like, after everything, after everything that's happened to me in my life in the last year, it's like, 
God has a plan for me. God has a path for me. I have no interest in the female whatsoever. Like, at all. 110%. No interest in her. I just want to move on with my life. And so, the only reason I'm making this is so she doesn't have to feel like she's doing something wrong. Or the family. I don't want to... Like, I just feel like I've outgrown the situation. But there is... Hold up. What I was going to do... What I was going to do before I left... Before I left to Phoenix, what I was going to do is I was going to try to stay here and just keep just keep getting spiritually and psychologically better and get into more in shape. And I was still, still going to try to win her. I, I'm so... Here's a bag. Here's a bag with some shit. Watch, look. Look at this. This is how much I was trying to get this girl. I had got this shirt from the internet. It said, I love my redhead. That's how that's how interested I was in the female. Now I want something like her sister. Now I want something <laughs> now I want the damn blonde. Uh, I love redheads. So these are you see these, this is the first time I ever opened these. And, oh look, I even have, see what else Jamil got. Now this is all stuff I ordered back in March, before I went to Phoenix. No, yeah, back in March, and a March, early April. This is a mug that says I love my red. Now this is stuff now this is stuff I was buying to encourage myself to pursue her. Cause I was like, man, you know what, Jamila? She doesn't believe you, you just gotta get this t-shirt. <laughs> I was like, she doesn't believe you. You just gotta get this t-shirt and wear this shirt or something and do this, do that. It all sounded pretty good. It all sound it all sounded pretty damn good. And so uh you know, but the only reason I'm able to do this is as proof that I've outgrown the female. I'm not, honestly, I'm not, I have no interest in her whatsoever. The only reason I'm making this video is to show my personal development, my personal growth. And the most interesting thing, I think, is this journal. Because there's a lot of things about myself that I'm learning by reading this stuff. And, you know, I... And I remember, I remember just walking for, for hours and hours and hours, and I'd just be walking and walking, and then out of nowhere, the gang stalking program would have this female just pull up in a car with a guy, and then pull away. And they would do that over and over and over again. And then it just got to the point to, to where I was just like, it just got to the point to where I was just like, man, Jamil, you know... You have to decide what this is going to mean for your life. And you have to decide what, what this is going to do for your life. And so I remember, I remember, I just remember, I just kept seeing her. And then she would keep doing that. And she seemed so afraid. She would never look at me. And I'm just like, I'm just like, why would you do that? And then be cowardly about it. Like, why, 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 why can't you just, just do what they want you to do. If you're going to do something, just do what they tell you to do. Get, get your money and go about your business. And the person I am now is not the same person I was then. And then again, going back to when I saw the girl the other day, I looked at her. And then she's doing the same thing. She can't look at me. And then I'm just like, I don't want anybody like that. I don't want to know. I don't want to be around anybody like that. I don't want to talk to anybody. Like, I don't mean that as a negative thing. Like, I still, like, you know, I, I just say it like, it seems like, it seems like there's this thing there that's keeping her from doing what she wants to do it is like accept the money from the people and do what they tell you to do and don't feel uncomfortable about it if you feel uncomfortable about it then why even you know what I mean why even like it's like I you know I have no interest in the female at all none and I never will and I'm not interested in talking to her and I never will be interested in talking to her but I'm just making the video 
that this is who I am and this is how I've outgrown my situations and like I, I like learn to overcome challenges and stuff like that. Like if any <laughs> her sister's a bad motherfucker I'm I'm just joking. I don't want the family to I know the family's gonna be mad they hear me talk like that about their about their daughter with the the blonde I did not know that was her sister. I did not <laughs> I did not know. I didn't know I didn't know. Had I known that was a sister I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have said anything. I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have said anything, boy. When she she was driving down in that red truck, and she looked me <laughs> she looked me in the eye, I felt like she set me on fire. I was like, ah, I gotta give me one of them blinds. You know what I mean? But I just want to prove, man. I just want to prove, like I've overcome so much. I I've outgrown this neighborhood. I've outgrown everything that's happened to me, and it's all thanks to the gang stalking program. So, what I want, the kind of female I want. I, I want one. Of, I want one of those badass fucking Barbie doll looking females. You know what I mean? That that fucking that like bilingual and all that stuff can can fucking help me do like try to do a book or something like that. Like I, I'm trying to get down, man. Like you know, I ain't let nothing hold me up no more. You know, I'm a whole different person, and so I just wanted to like make a video on that and and just express that like you know whoever that girl is like. She just go ahead and do whatever the program, you know, whatever the program is setting her up to do, she just do it because, you know, make your money, get your money and stuff like that. And, you know, I mean, get your money while you can, because you might not be able to, there might come a day where, where you're not going to be able to, to uh, do it. So, you know, do what you can while you can. But anyway, I just want to show people how I had achieved it. And then the, the girl's mom, her eyes are sick. <laughs> She pulled up. She pulled up. I don't. I know people heard me on here talking about people's wives and people's moms and stuff. Like I'm not like that. Honestly, I'm not like that. The f the father's pretty cool. Like he always wears this baby blue shirt, and he kind of looks like an old pool hustler from like he looks like one of those old pool hustlers from Chicago. Like he'd have a nickname like Baby Frankie. Like that. <laughs> Remember Baby Frankie from back in '76? That Baby Frankie who hit the pew. On the queue back in, he did that. He did it every year until '81, 1981. Like you know, those like the pool hustlers and stuff. That's what he reminds me of. So I don't mean no disrespect. Like I don't mean no disrespect. Like about your wife or whatever. But your wife's eyes, <laughs> wife has some nice eyes. She she pulled up on me in this in this SUV, like her, her car, and like she she drives a real nice car. <laughs> she just looks at me. She just looks at me. I'm like, damn, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't like when I saw the car coming. I knew it was the family car, but it wasn't until she looked me in the eyes. And I was like, God damn. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, just, I don't mean I don't, I don't mean no disrespect with that one, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I was just, you know, I'm like damn. I should I should have been sending her the flowers. No, <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. All right.